Welcome to Electron Online. When we perform hypothesis testing, there are four possible outcomes. Now, what are they and what are the ramifications? Well, let's take a look at that. Well, first of all, we can either, and this is of course based on the information and data that we gather when we take a sample of the population, and we find the mean and we find the deviation to the mean and we find the standard deviation, we find the sample size and all that. And based upon that information, we either will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, this is the symbol for null hypothesis. It's the hypothesis that claims that we will fail the conditions that we're looking for, or we will reject the null hypothesis. So if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, then we believe that the null hypothesis is true. If we reject the null hypothesis, then we believe that the null hypothesis is false. But here we then tie that in with what's actually going on. So, if we fail to reject the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is true, it's a true statement, then we were correct. We called it a type A correct decision. So, the null hypothesis is true and we fail to reject it, meaning we accept the null hypothesis, so we believe that the null hypothesis is true and therefore, we make the correct decision. We call it a type A correct decision. But if we reject the null hypothesis, meaning we believe that null hypothesis is false, and let's say that it is indeed false, that that's also a correct decision that we call a type B correct decision. In other words, we reject the null hypothesis. We don't think that it's true, we believe that's false, and it's actually false, then we made another correct decision. So either we reject the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is therefore true, oh, I'm sorry, we're gonna get confused here. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is true, then we made the correct decision. We don't reject it, we accept it, and it's true. Or, if we reject the null hypothesis because we believe it's false, and it actually is false, again, we made the correct decision, so we call that type A and type B correct decisions. Now, what if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis is false? We should have rejected it because it's false, but we didn't reject it. Well, we'll call that a type 2 error. Or, let's say we actually reject the null hypothesis because we believe that it's false, but it's actually true, we call it a type 1 error. So a type 1 error is where we reject an all hypothesis, but it's actually true. And a type 2 error is where we fail to reject it, but it's actually false. We should have rejected it. And so we call that type 1 or type 2 errors. And those are the four possible outcomes, and this is how we normally look at them. So we have type A and type B correct decisions. We have type 1 and type 2 errors. And that is how we have the four possible outcomes when we do hypothesis testing. Hmm. There's a little bit of confusion, confusing, but if you think about it, it does make sense. And that is how it's done. You sure they could not make it any more complex? <laughs> I know, it takes a couple of times to get a hang of this. <laughs> Well, because they, they can all happen. There's four possibilities. There they are. Well, if it's one, <laughs> then it's not the other. If it's not the other, then it's that one. I know. It took me for a loop the first time I saw this too, but now it makes sense for whatever it's worth. All right. That's it for today.